Hello everybody, welcome to this week's live stream. Sorry I missed you last week, uh, really, really missed, missed doing our, our weekly meetups. But today what we're going to do, we're going to be talking about uh, the UK housing market along with uh, what's happening in my area in North Essex. I've got some data, uh, some real-time data in terms of what I'm experiencing with, with house prices. We're going to go over some news that's been reported in the last few days in terms of mortgages and house prices and also going to get into your questions and answers. So if you are new around here we like to do a little bit of talking and then we get on with uh, your your section of the show if you like where you get to ask me an estate agent of over 20 years anything you want it can be about the housing market if you're buying or selling if you have a question about the conveyancing uh, process if you um, have a question about mortgages I'm not a qualified financial advisor but um, I can give you my opinion uh, and I can also put you in touch with uh, a lawyer and a mortgage broker if you do need some uh, uh, some assistance along the way so Again, welcome to our Wednesday night live stream. And I just want to go over what I've been experiencing in the market over the last couple of weeks. It's, it's been a couple of weeks since we've done one of these live streams. Um, so we have been experiencing relatively high levels of buyers inquiring, which is very, very unusual for, for, for November. Um, October was a very quiet month in terms of agreed sales. September was our second busiest month in terms of sales. Um, but October wasn't, unfortunately. October wasn't. That's normally our busiest month. But November has started exceptionally, exceptionally strong for some reason. I don't quite know. Not quite sure, but we've got a mixture of first-time buyers, uh, people downsizing and upsizing, people with mortgages without mortgages. So it's a bit of a, a bit of a mixture, uh, and not expected. Whether that continues will, will remain to be seen, uh, and if it goes into December. Uh, but at the moment, in my part of North Essex, um, houses are still selling. Uh, people are still getting mortgages. Um, however, there is a lot more caution, a lot more caution in the um, in talking between vendors and, and purchasers. So it's very, very keen if you are somebody who is looking to sell or is currently selling at the moment um, to be, be realistic in your expectations of not only the price you're going to achieve, but also how long it will take to sell as well as the actual conveyancing process uh, after that. Some agents are still pricing properties like it is last year and the year before going in way way high with uh, with, uh, with with asking prices and um, yeah and it's 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 not it's not great it's not great <laughs> there's there's a handful of agents who are valuing correctly but but I suppose the majority are actually uh, still overpricing to, to win business and yes Leo Liz this is uh, this is live <laughs> this is live um so hello welcome to the show if you haven't already please give the stream a thumbs up that helps youtube um you know let people know that we're doing something half decent and enjoyable and hopefully a little bit informative for you guys as well so uh, thank you very much for joining us um and good evening leo liz um right so what i want to do is yeah the market at the moment for me in north essex is is, is going going pretty pretty well i say last month bit of a blip generally october is really busy but certainly this 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 october has been rather rather difficult but november has started strong like i say to a a massive surprise a massive surprise to us so what i want to share with you guys is uh my companies or my office um what the average agreed sale price was from january up until october okay so I've been, well, I realized yesterday that I've been sitting on a huge amount of data which not anyone else has access to apart from me in terms of my, my company, in terms of what we've actually agreed, sales we've agreed and the asking prices. And I thought it'd be interesting to see if we've seen that that dip in asking prices that the newspaper and the mainstream media um, have been saying is happening or, or is going to happen. So I spent a little while going through our, our sold properties um, for the last 10 months and uh, put that in into a graph, which I'm hope, hoping I can show you now. Um, but first of all, let me know, what, what do you think North Essex, where I am, what you think is happening with asking prices? I put, I put a little poll up on, uh, uh, on YouTube about how far do you think not hope or want asking prices to, to drop. We've got a few people voting, 11 people voting, 
nearly half of you think that prices are going to drop at least 20%. Uh, next highest, 10% drop at 27%. And then we've got 5% at 18% and 15%. So if you haven't voted in that poll, let me know what you think is going to happen with, uh, with asking prices. And while you're there, if you can give the stream a like, that would be fantastic. So let's show the data in which uh, I've got access to. And this is a very, very small snapshot, okay? I don't need to think this is the whole of, of the UK or whole of England. This is my one office. Um, we are the leading estate agent in my area, in my sort of um, uh, council area, if you like, which uh, has quite a few different sort of towns and, uh, and, and villages. Um, and then this will give you an indication of what's happening where I am in, in North Essex. Um, so here we go. Hopefully it works and you can see it. Right, so as you can see, I've done it month by month. And um, obviously on the left-hand side, as you're seeing it, what the, the average house price was that, that we sold in that particular month. And as you can see, January, we had a, a pretty low, <laughs> low average asking price or agreed prices, agreed prices. Um, I think it was just over 170,000 pounds we agreed uh, was the average price in, um, in January. And what I want to actually just drop in as a, as a caveat here is um, we sell a lot of um, park homes as well as beach huts living by the sea. And I've included these in the figures. So um, some of these beach huts sell for between 20,000 and 60, 70,000. And park homes that we sell can range anywhere from 30,000 pounds up to 180,000 pounds. And they're not on land registry um, figures. So um, that has probably brought down the average of these as well. But I just put them in there because it was quick and easy for me to, uh, to do and doesn't if anything, it makes the, the figures look like or look less than what they actually are because of those low, uh, low agreed prices. So Jeremy was uh, about £170,000. Uh, and then we started seeing a, a gradual increase in the average price of, of properties being sold. I think we got to about £127,000 in, in February, then £138,000 uh, in March. Then we started having a little dip in April, May, which Looking back, when I was doing the figures, I didn't know what the average price was going to be until I finished uh, each month. It looked like that in April and May, we started seeing a couple of months of um, average agreed se selling price starting to come down. So one month doesn't make a trend. Two months certainly starts to look like it. And when I was going through these figures, I think, oh, blimey, maybe we did start seeing a, a downturn in um, in prices being agreed. Uh, then we went on to, to June, the summer, summer months, um, and the price picked up again. We we're at £128,000, I think it was. And then again in July, we saw another increase. I think we got to £137,000. So it's, um, yeah. And then you see that, but we, we've not seen this, me as my estate agency in, in, in my part of North F Essex, we've not seen this huge um, drastic drop in, in agreed prices. So this is average house price that we agreed each in, uh, in each individual of those, um, uh, those, those months. So I just want to be interesting to share that information with you because if you are in North Essex around that sort of area, then maybe you're experiencing the same. Um, the whole UK property market is made up of different micro markets. So what's happening where I am doesn't necessarily mean what's happening where you are, but you need to do your own research if you can and make informed decisions based on data in your area, not on averages for the whole of the country. Because as you can see here, my part of the world, we've not noticed house prices having that that cliff face drop, which some people have predicted or are predicting. Next month, when I've got November's figures, we may see a massive decline. We may we may not, but this is as it stands right now, October, we still hadn't seen the massive price drops that people were predicting. And I hope that uh, um, for some people where you are, if you can't afford to buy a property, that those prices do come down for you so you are able to afford. But um, yeah, let me know what, you're, what you think, guys. Let me know what you think. And again, if you haven't liked the stream, uh, please, please do give it a like. So I just want to be interesting to share. And what I'll do is um, in end of November, I'll update this chart. And in December, um, I'll update it towards the end of the month um, to let you know 
just to keep you keep you up to date. And that's what this channel is all about, keeping you up to date with what's going on in the uh, in, in the market and in my market. I do have a couple of estate agent friends who I may ask if they would do the same uh, and share their um, their figures. I did on this one actually have a, a second chart going along this, giving you the amount of, um, not the amount, but an idea on how many sales were agreed in each month. Um, interestingly, March was our joint highest sales month along with September. So we sold the same amount of houses in March and September. However, the actual price of agreed properties in September was slightly lower. Um, and then we had well, we didn't have as many in January. So the ones we sold in January must have been very, very cheap. Uh, but again, that does include beach huts, um, park homes, and we've got a little area near us which is um, very, very cheap for cash buyers only, which also does bring those figures down. But again, I've put them in to be open and honest, and that is my office's figures for, for the last 10 months of the year. So um, yeah, I, I just thought I'd, I'd share that with you guys because I say I don't think many estate agents share this type of this type of information. Um, my boss might tell me off for it, but I don't I don't see why um, sharing the average price of a house that's sold uh, in each month is uh, is um, yeah is a bad thing. I don't think anyway. But there you go. That's that's what I've been finding out. Um, and back to me here. So let's just get uh, some uh, da -da -da -da, some comments up. Hi Sophie, how are you doing? How do I click on this? I've got a mouse this week, so I can um, <laughs> I can show you, I can show you what's going on. Um, how do I get you up on here? There we go. We'll pop you down there. Uh, I'm very well, thank you, Sophie. I'm very well. Hopefully, we can get you uh, uh, get you moving soon. Um, Dom, how are you doing? People seriously paying tens of thousands of pounds for a beach hut? Yes, they are. Uh, we were selling these beach huts for around sort of ten, fifteen thousand uh, pounds a couple of years ago. Uh, we had our beach rejuvenated about five six years ago, and after during COVID, um, these uh, house, or these sorry, these beach huts, these sheds um, started getting sixty. Some even got seventy thousand um, pounds, which um, is 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 a is a lot of money for yeah a shed next to the sea, and that is all they are. That is all they are. It's it's quite. Um, Quite unbelievable, quite unbelievable. But it's the world we live in. There were people who were willing to spend tens of thousands of pounds for a shed. And to be fair, getting a shed for your garden is probably not far off at the moment. Cool. That is, they're, they're expensive. They're expensive. Atkin, welcome back, my friend. Hello, hello. Hope you're doing well. Hey, of course, good to see you back this way. I missed it last week. I'm, I, yeah, I did miss it. I was um, with the wife enjoying the time with my wife but wife but I did actually um yeah did actually miss miss chatting with you guys I don't know how long this one's going to go on for I think um moving home with Charlie's also doing a live stream he's nicked me spot um so I'm sure a few of you regulars uh, may be over there but I hope you will uh, catch up on the replay as well uh Paul RS welcome back my friend good to see you good to see you how you doing and one less car some regulars welcome back thank you so much for for, for joining me again guys I really, really do appreciate it. If you haven't, if you haven't liked the stream, please do. It makes, well, it helps the channel immensely. And I want to help as many people buy their first home as property, no matter what's going on in the market. Um, yeah, that's that's my aim here. That is my aim here. So, hello, Sonia. How are we? How are we? Say hello to everyone. Chat amongst yourselves, because I do tend to rub it on a little bit. Um, what I want to do now is I'm going to try and go over some news which has been in the um, in the media the last uh, last few days. Uh, as I've been pretty busy at work, surprisingly, um, wasn't expecting to come back after after a few days and to be as busy as, as as we are. So I've not had too much chance to put as much effort into this. I'm not sure if me sharing the screen is going to work, but ho hopefully it does. Hopefully it does. Um, can you hear music by any way? Any chance? Can you hear music? There should be some sort of music in the background. If not, that oh well. Right, so we're going to go down to something else. Let's go to this. Not sure if I can see that right. Right, I've got no idea if you can see what, 
what I can see. So let me know in the comments section if you can, if you can see. But what I'm uh, seeing here is a BBC News article from a few days ago that um, they're reporting on the Office um, of Budget Responsibility, I think it is, um, are saying that house prices between now and autumn 2024 are due to drop by 9%. Um, I don't think you can see that, can you? I don't think you can. Um, where are we? You can't hear the music. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can see what I'm showing, can you? So uh, let's just go back to this screen. Uh, I will read it out. I will read it out, but I'll, I will link it in the description after the stream's done. Um, but yeah, <laughs> moving with Charlie now. You're better, Lee. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Lee, you can't hear the music. I'll try and sort that out for, for next week. Uh, for next week, uh, Adam, uh, Charlie's very pe pessimistic lately. It's entertaining to watch him, but if he's right, I'm worried for the people who are not much extra. Day. I mean. He, he predicted price drops of 35% um, and was telling sellers to reduce their house prices about two months ago by 20%, um, which personally, judging by from the, the facts and the figures that I've got for my area, um, would not would have been the wrong advice for, for my sellers then. Um, and also now at the moment as well. Um, we haven't seen those, those massive price drops. So there is no one answer fits all when it comes to the property market, which he does say every now and again as well. But I think after the the autumn statement, the, the newest budget, and we've had a few budgets, um, I think he revised his um, his, his downwards uh, in terms of house prices to 20%. Um, again, I think that's because the government changed something about if you're on universal credit, you can apply for a benefit to help pay your mortgage straight away rather than waiting three, six or, or, or nine months, which um, would stem the flow of repossessions uh, coming to the market and therefore the distressed sales and the full sellers to sell. So um, there will be, um, uh, yeah, there, there will be people that will need to sell um, and who will need to sell quickly. And that happens in any market. We had people who were willing to sell really quickly in last year. They needed a buyer to secure the one they were going for, took less. So any market, there'll be desperate people to sell. But if if people got a 95% mortgage a couple of years ago and now they're looking to remortgage, then it is going to be bloody difficult for them. Bloody difficult for them. Um, my advice last year, I think it would have been October. Was it October? September, October last year. I was advising people to to tie in for a, for a five year fixed um, if they could because there was always already talk of inflation uh, going up and the Bank of England increasing the, the base rate in the coming weeks and they started to do it in December. So if, if people tie themselves into a five year fix, then hopefully they're going to be okay. But the two year fixes um, will probably look to be going on a variable rate mortgage. Um, if I was them, in my opinion, not my advice, to try and sort of uh, uh, keep that. Um, uh, try and keep that interest rate as low as possible. But that brings me on to the, well, no, let's finish off this. Let's finish off what um, uh, what the BBC reported. I'm going to read it out to you. Um, UK house prices will fall for the next two years before starting to rise again, according to the government's official forecaster. A drop of 9% is expected between now and the autumn of 2024, the Office for Budget Responsibility has said. This will be a relief to some potential first-time buyers following a period of sharp rises in property prices, but a squeeze on their own finances, which I'm sure everyone's feeling, will limit their ability to save for a deposit. So I know right now with things going up in price, um, I'm not spending as much money and I'm not able to save as much money. So people who aren't in homes are probably feeling something similar. Um, the cost of a mortgage is also likely to stay at a much higher than homeowners have become accustomed to during the last decade. A typical two or five year fixed rate deal currently has an interest rate of just over 6%. This was a few days ago, mind guys, this was a few days ago. So um, that's the next thing I wanna touch on after we finish with, with this article. Um, Higher mortgage rates and the wider impact of lockdown, sorry, of slowdown in the economy, such as rising unemployment, will uh, unite to push down house prices, the OBR has said. It forecasts uh, mortgage rates and the wider impact. Oh, it forecasts that there will be still an average increase in property prices this year of 10.7%, despite the slowdown. It will be followed by two years of falls, with house prices down 1.2% by the end of next year 
and 5.7% in 2024. They then suggest that property prices will start to rise again, slightly faster than people's income, as if we're not used to that already, up by 1.2% in 2025 and 3% in 2026. They do say, though, that there is a massive, massive caveat in terms of no one actually bloody knows. And I think that's, the, uh, <laughs> that's what we've got to take away from this is no one actually knows what's going to happen. Um, so yes, they, OBR, they they think house prices are going to drop um, around 9% between the now and the end of 2024. So we've got sort of 25 months of potential house prices coming down. But if we do come down 9%, we're only going back to what they were last year. We need another sort of 16% to get back to where they were in 2019 before um, things started to, to go crazily, crazily high. So um, yeah. What do you think, guys? Let's have a look at the poll, see what uh, people are saying, what they think house prices. So a bit of a swing on this now, 32 votes. We've got five, um, sorry, 21% of you thinking 5% drop, 39% uh, of you saying a 10% drop, 12% uh, 15 and 27% for 20% plus. So I'm not sure since reading that report they've changed, um, but... I personally, my opinion, I agree with the majority of you guys there. Uh, it's all about 11, 12 of you that I think there'd be around a 10% drop in asking prices. And I said this before this was released. <laughs> I said this weeks and weeks and weeks ago um, that I could probably see around a 10%. It may be a bit more. It may be a bit less. It may be none or a hell of a lot more. But um, I, I personally think um, that things won't be as bad as the mainstream media are are predicting and i i hope that's true i hope that's true but we are waiting to see don't we would once wait and see um where are we house prices dropped over yeah it's it was a bold it was a bold statement a bold statement but he has a lot of data he has a lot of data and he's got friends in banks and stuff like that 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 the sort of helping with his um his estimates and stuff like that but um yeah i i i personally um don't think yeah i, I just can't i can't i can't see it i can't see it. I, I wish i well to a certain degree to a certain degree i we don't know i don't know <laughs> um one less car would where are we rather listen to your your level head views than a sensational one this is what I've tried to be. I could quite easily grow my channel hugely by jumping on the bandwagon by saying house prices are going to drop 40, 50% um, and get those those clicks and those people people viewing. But I I feel that would be, in my opinion, um, the, wrong, the wrong thing to do. I report it as it's happened. I'm not going to make headlines by trying to get clicks Oh, that's that's not me. I just report what I'm what I see in the news, what I'm experiencing myself, and then you guys can can make your own decisions. Um, DM. If I could work from home, would you buy a big house in rural France? It's tempting. My wife would. I'm sure my wife would would. Well, she'd own a farm in England, up up north somewhere. Um, she loves animals. Uh, I'd love to work from home, but this job doesn't allow that, unfortunately. Uh, unless I went on my own, which yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but yeah, I, I I could see myself in a thick woolly woolly jumper, fire going, um, yeah, yeah, working, drinking a beer, a cheap beer, yeah, that would be nice. That would be nice. <laughs> Leo agrees. Leo agrees. Why the hell not? What's holding you back? What's holding you back, DM? Nothing. That's the thing. Uh, maybe Brexit. You need to have a lot of money in your bank, don't you, to be able to uh, go and live over there now. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It could be. Uh, I know we had a couple of sellers go to Spain last year, um, obviously after Brexit, and uh, they then couldn't afford. Um, they need to have a certain amount of money in their bank for the first year, and then something else for the second year to be able to get a visa, a living visa in Spain. Um, and they didn't have enough money, so they they pulled out the sale because they couldn't they couldn't move abroad. Um, so you might have to have a, a few quid behind you, but if you could buy cheap enough and have that money left over, DM then can go for it. And Leo's a little jealous. Sounds like a dream. I'm a little jealous if you get to do that. And Ashley has paused Charlie to be with me. Thank you very much, Ashley. Thank you. Thank you. Is he still going, is he? Is he still going? He probably is. He probably is. Um, I, I, sorry, what I was watching, I was eating me, me dinner, watching his live stream before, um, before I started. Um, he's got an estate agent called Perry Power going onto his channel um, tomorrow, I think. 
Um, Perry, fantastic estate agent. I follow him on Facebook. We're friends on Facebook. Um, his estate agency, nuts. If if there's any wannabe estate agents out there looking to see how it's done or to start your own agency, then yeah, check out Perry Power. Cracking name as well. Cracking name. Uh, he's a decent chap. Decent chap. Uh, Prasana, I hope I'm saying that right. Hi, what would be the potential price drop comparison between new builds versus old? A first time buyer who have no who have no preference. So new builds, new build companies did a massive um, tail off in buyers um, buying because the help to buy scheme um, ended in October, I believe. So there wasn't this. 20% equity loan for um, for first time buyers buying new builds houses, which I'm sure builders would have budgeted for. However, building costs have gone up, labor costs have gone up. So um, new build prices, they tend to build these new builds and they will have projections of what they want to achieve. They will factor in certain market conditions. So um, they may not be in a position to have to reduce their prices, um, but Second homes always sell for cheaper. You're always paying a premium for a brand new house, just like you are with a brand new car. As soon as you've moved into a brand new house, like a car, it's not worth the amount you paid for it straight away because it's then lost that brand new feel. Um, some people would pay 10, 15, 20% more, uh, depending on the location, uh, to live in a new build property. I personally, if I wasn't an estate agent, I probably would buy a new build for that just move in feeling and not have to do anything and have the 10 year NHBC warranty and, and all those bits and pieces. But as an estate agent, knowing that they lose value almost immediately after buying them, um, unless you bought in the last couple of years. Um, yeah, that, that wouldn't sit well with me. That wouldn't sell with me. Uh, but yeah, 10, 15% around that sort of figure, around that sort of figure. Isla, how you doing? All the non-essential shops were super busy this weekend. I don't think recession is as bad. Do you know what? I was in local city to me with my wife on Thursday and it was rammed. My mum and dad went to London on Saturday, rammed. And I did actually say to my wife, you wouldn't think there's a recession happening. The amount of people spending money, bags left, right and centre. I mean, we, we, we just went to Primark. Just get to prime. I get a few little bits for the kids and stuff. So, um, yeah. But there were people with huge, huge bags. All the toy shops, all the shops are around. Absolutely mob. So it, it does make you think how much of a recession we're going to have. I know people have said it's going to be longer, but um, not as deep as we've experienced before. Um, yeah. But we'll uh, we'll have to wait and see. I have to see what the data says. I have to see what the data says. But there are a lot of people still sitting on a lot of money that they saved during COVID. Um, people that weren't going out spending, <laughs> they could have saved thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds during that time as well. Um, so there, there is a lot of people with with savings in the bank who uh, are able to spend. I'm not one of them. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, <clears throat> but no, I do agree with you, Isla. I do agree. I don't think um, it's as bad as what things were happening in 2008. 2008. Cool. You can work remote if you sell your own house. <laughs> well, I, my wife does photography as well, so she works from home. So I couldn't really sell her her business premises. Um, that I don't think that will go that will go down too well. I could work from home, but I like the um, the benefit of a stable wage coming in each month. I like that until YouTube starts paying me thousands of pounds a month um, to do live streams. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to be <laughs> anywhere near working from home just yet. Uh, would be nice though. Would be nice. Uh, I'm in tech. Yep, I remember. Decent salary and remote working. 70k in savings at the moment. Cost of living and property seem far, far cheaper in France. Got to do my research this weekend. It's interesting. It's interesting. I mean, that that's that's another thing people got to take into consideration. We are thinking of moving abroad. Is is the cost of living there? There's different types of taxation system, property taxes, income taxes, stuff like that, and also general energy, food, services prices as well. So, um, yeah, that's a interesting fact. Do your research, DM. If you go to France, give us an invite. That'd be lovely. <laughs> so I'm going to go into um, some more news now. Um, should we do a bit more on that one? We covered it all. Da, 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 da. Oh, they've said the UK housing market in reality is a series of local markets or micro markets, as I call them. So house price falls could have more impact in some areas than other. So they're giving averages again, aren't they? So that 1.2% the first year and 5 point, um, whatever it was, 
uh, 7% in 2024. Um, that is an average. You will see some places going down harder than that and some not as hard as that. But again, it's all just guesswork at the moment. All just guesswork. So the next thing I want to share with you guys, a uh, bit better news in terms of, of, of mortgages. Um, the Guardian, God bless the Guardian, um, they've actually done a piece on good news about mortgages for a change rather than the lengthy thing <laughs> the lengthy pieces they do regarding house prices uh falling and mortgage rates soaring they've actually done a little article on um on mortgage rates with some some good news for borrowers so the average uk five-year mortgage the guardian report rate is now less than six percent for the first time in seven weeks uh the average rate on a five-year mortgage has dropped below six percent since the disastrous mini budget that ended up costing the chancellor his job money facts Great company to check out their website for mortgage information. A financial data provider said the average five-year fixed mortgage rate had dropped below 6% for the first time in seven weeks. A lot of repetition there. The reduction is good news for would-be borrowers, but rates could fall further still, it suggested. The housing market was thrown into disarray by uh, Kwarteng's radical plan for unfunded tax cuts, which triggered a spike in the long-term borrowing costs cost that underpin mortgage deals. Since then, Jeremy Hunt has reversed a lot of those, and the... Um, swap market which is how banks borrow money their interest rate has uh, has gone down borrowers may well breathe a sigh of relief to see that fixed rate mortgages are starting to fall but there may be much more room for improvement said rachel springing finance expert expert at money facts borrowers who pause their home ownership plans or indeed park the idea of refinances may now be tempted to scrutinize the latest deals on offer so uh, it's it's not back where it was. I think it's very key to, we've got to remember that they're not going to get back to, to where they were. We're not going to get those those ultra low interest rates that, that we've been used to for the last four, five, six years. Um, just not going to happen. That's not normal. That was the, the anomaly in the market in terms of mortgage rates. Where we're, we're going to finish up in the next um, year, two years, whenever the interest rates start to, to come down, um, that will be the new normal. We'll see a base rate of probably around two to three percent and then mortgage rates a bit above that so um yeah if you're waiting for house prices to crash and interest rates to come down again to where they were last year i don't think it's going to happen i don't think it's going to happen unless we have a black swan event again like covid then yeah I, I can't see it happening but i thought i'd just check out a few of um the mortgage deals that are on money facts uh website um, so you can go on Moneyfax yourself, or if you do want to speak to a qualified mortgage broker, um, email me lee at leeeverettproperty.co.uk, and I'll put you in touch with a qualified mortgage broker that can uh, sort you out the best mortgage. But on Moneyfax website, they do the best first time buyer mortgages. And what we can see here, what I can see, because I can't share my screen, co-op um, are offering a two-year fixed at 5.37% with a 90% loan to value. Okay, product fee, 1,499 quid, but 5.37, well below the 6% um, that people have been been advertising. Um, there was another one as well, um, platform, part of co-op, 5.15% 5, 5, 5 for five years, 90% loan to value. So that's nearly a whole percent less than what the, the mainstream media are reporting. Um, there's a couple of other ones at 5.15%, 5.55%, 535 um, yeah, and that's just with me, who isn't an expert, having a quick look online to see what's going on with mortgage rates. So don't be scared to have a chat with a mortgage broker to see what's going on, all right? The average mortgage rate won't be the figure that you get. A mortgage rate is tailored specifically to you and your needs and the bank that your broker places you with. So yeah, you need to speak to somebody independent. That way you can get the best deal um, and the most likelihood of being accepted for, for a mortgage, providing you found a property you, you, you need to buy at the price you feel comfortable at and somewhere you're going to stay for the next few years. So that would be my advice. That would be my advice. So normally by now we have a few questions about what's going on. Uh, well, well, if I have any questions about the housing market or if you're buying or selling a property, uh, you want to ask, pick my brains. We've got a few home sellers in the chat I know that, that, that I'm sure would, would help out. And again, if you are thinking of getting a quotation for, for buying a property from a lawyer, if you email me, lee at leeeverettproperty.co.uk, I can get your £250 discount on legal fees as well. So if you want to save some money that way, uh, you can put that towards um, <laughs> deposit. 
I don't know, a bit of carpet. I don't know what you expect, what 250 quid will get you these days. Probably not a lot, actually. Probably not a lot. So if you are just joining the live stream, because some of you would have, uh, we've got about 20, 30 more people viewing right now. What I showed earlier was uh, basically what I've been experiencing in terms of uh, the average price agreed in my company over the last 10 months. So uh, going to go over it again quickly, guys. So sorry if you've already viewed this, but we've got a few new people watching. Here you can see the average agreed price in my company, which is a large proportion of my area, but only a, a fraction of the uh, <laughs> of the entire country, is that I have not experienced those uh, those house price drops yet. Some people were predicting that prices had dropped two, three, four, five, six months ago. Um, and as you can see, August, May time, there was a bit of a drop. There was that we saw, that we saw. But we're not talking 20, 30%. We're talking 10, 5% in those particular vendors. And then we started seeing the prices come up again. So there was a, a dip, but not a trend. And then those prices started to come up again, dip again, up again, and up again. So that is what's experiencing in, in, in North Essex. Um, where are we here? There we go. So I thought my screen had frozen. Can you still hear me, guys? My screen's frozen on the computer. Hopefully you can. Hopefully you can. Yep, so that is my presentation. If you do have any questions, please get them in, in the next couple of minutes because otherwise I'm going to go and either watch some football if there's any on or spend some time with the wife. Um, as much as I love chatting to you guys, if there's no one here talking, it's just me rabbiting on, then um, that will be me, uh, me done for the evening. Oh, here we go. Uh, Anna, violin viola. Great name. Brought our flat in July and now it's gone up 4% since then. Go figure. So did you buy... Did you buy below market value? Did you get a cracking deal? How do you know it's gone up by 4%? Have you had it revalued, um, added value to it? Let me know, let me know. But there are, I mean, here's a, here's a scenario for you. Um, in November last year, we sold um, a three bedroom semi-detached house. Uh, we sold it at the asking price, which was 280,000 pounds. We then had another buyer who viewed it a few days before also offer the asking price. We said, look, we've put it to the owner. They want to stick with the current buyer. They've said they want to stick with that buyer. Thank you. Thank you very much. They then come back with, I think it's 290, 285 or 290,000 um, pounds, which the owner did actually did actually accept. Um, so they pulled out from that one. That buyer completed in March. And three weeks ago, they asked me to go around and value the property. I said, realistically, look, if you can get your money back, plus our fees and solicitors, I think you've done well. Because the market isn't as buoyant as what it was last year. You're not going to get people fighting over your property. Um, took some great photographs, done a video. Then um, we put it on the market for £305,000. Okay, so twenty pounds to £15,000 more than, than what they paid for it um, six, seven, eight months ago. And I said, look, we'll give it a go. But if after two, three weeks you haven't sold, we're going to need to bring that down. Um, I only went and bloody sold it at the asking price yesterday. <laughs> so a buyer knowing that that property sold for 285, 290, nothing else has been done to it. Um, and they're paying 20 to 15,000 pounds more than what, what somebody paid for it uh, a matter of months ago. Figure that. Figure that. That is why. I'm not experiencing crashes because there are people who are able to buy and wanting to buy and available houses for them to do it. And while there's all those things, there's always people with money, always people. <laughs> it's crazy, crazy. Uh, Suzu, Harley, my housing process is going on. Excellent. Now searches are done, but I've got a few questions regarding search results. Who do I ask? You can ask me. Um, or um, what your sister would have do is they would report on the searches, which is basically, this is what we found out. This is what we have concerned about or concerns about and want to ask the seller's solicitors. And if you have any concerns, let the solicitor know and they can then ask the vendor's solicitor or answer those questions for you. But if you have any questions, you know I'm here every Wednesday, most Wednesdays. But yeah, definitely speak to your solicitor if you want a more legal um, answer. But if you want a quick informal answer, you can always uh, shoot me a comment, uh, ping me an email, and I can uh, I, I can reply to you. No problem at all. No problem at all. 
Round one. Did, I, I know of Alex Kerr. He's a, yes, definitely. Do you know what? When um, uh, I first started this channel a couple of years ago, two and a half years ago, he was one of the channels which I watched. Um, he's some of his content putting out there on the mortgage market is fantastic and I've encouraged my the mortgage broker that I use to do something similar uh, but he's camera shy and he also said there's some legal reasons as to giving financial advice uh, online um, which I'm sure um, <clears throat> yeah I'm sure Alex Kerr has done his thing but no he does some fantastic uh, some fantastic videos he's got a great office as well compared to my dining room which is a photo studio dining room and a kids playroom uh, <laughs> I need a bigger house. I need a house like Alex. But no, great channel. Go and subscribe to Alex Kerr if, you, if you're interested in mortgages because um, he, I think he specifically, like me, tries to help first-time buyers. Um, so, so also most highest that was on a flood risk. Okay, so yeah, I live by the coast. So the whole of my area is classed as being on a flood risk. You need to look at the flood risk data going onto the um, environmental website and seeing what the actual risk is, when the last flood was, if there's been any... Um, sea defences or water defences have been put in place since it last flooded but anywhere where you're near water there will be a flood risk no matter how small it is um, but you can go onto the environmental website and have a look at the flood uh, the flood report or look in your, your, your searches yourself and that will give you a good indication of what's uh, what's happening but also if your lender is happy with um, the searches because remember your solicitor is also working for your mortgage lender then and they have no objections then chances are there's probably not anything to worry about but again speak to your sister get that that advice from your sister but generally um, unless you're in a, a very high flood risk area I mean you've said the flood risk is it high flood risk medium or low that's probably the key word before flood risk that, that you need to take notice of I know uh, Lee, people have the idea that in the long run, property always goes up. So given amount of cash in system, bricks and mortar, is asset. yeah, eventually, I mean, you look at any house price graph, they always got that they may go down for a small period of time. I think there was a stat I done in this, this stream uh, a few weeks ago, that out of the last, oh, was it 10 years or it might have been 20 years, there was only like... 12 months or 14 months out of all those years where house prices actually fell. So odds on, you're going to make money if you're able to stay in the property long enough and remortgage at the right time. So that's, that's the key thing for people at the moment. If you're able to buy a property right now and you can get a mortgage, um, then interest rates shouldn't be going too much higher. The only way for them to go really um, is is down, which they have been doing in the last sort of five, four or five days. So when you do come to remortgage in five years' time, or four years' time, if you bought last year, not only have you paid off more of your property, hopefully house prices may have started to recover and go up a little bit since then, and interest rates have come down. So it could mean you're actually paying less in the long run and your property is worth more. And each time you're remortgaging you might get a better loan to value because if house prices have gone up and you've paid off more equity that's what i'm hoping in four years time when my mortgage deal comes to an end even if prices um or interest rates are high they're going to be higher than what i'm on now i'm hoping with my loan to value and potential increase in um in in, in house price then i should be no worse off um but again again it's um it's all just guesswork but yeah generally with property you shouldn't you shouldn't lose if you uh, if you stay in it long enough Nourishing Roots, after many months, we have now exchanged. Congratulations. And because Alex isn't here, I don't think we're going to get an applause. There you go. There you go. If Alex is here, sorry, mate. Um, many months we've exchanged and completion date is next week. We can't wait to move in. We decided to ignore the doom and gloom and just go for it. It's a home, not just money. Perfect, perfect thing. So if you're buying a house for an investment, then it's different, different scenario. If you're buying a home to live in, to have a roof over your head and security over your head for five, 10 years, how long your mortgage is, then you buy when you can afford to, you buy when there's a property you, you need to buy and for the price you think it's worth. If all those things, like the triangle of things, if all those things fall into place, then you should buy really, unless there's, I don't know, you're gonna lose your job or something like that. But if you're buying a, an investment, then 
any dip in house prices can really affect your bottom line. So, but again, this isn't for um, for investors. This channel, this is purely for for, for homeowners and and, and first time buyers. But yeah, um, I I, th- I think. I think that's a, a really, really great way of putting it. Really great way of putting it. Um, it's a home, not just for money. No one has the right that a house makes you money. First and foremost, it's security. It's a, it's a roof over your head for you and your family. Uh, great one. I'm really, really pleased for you at Nourishing Roots. Really pleased for you. Congratulations. Uh, and good luck when you move in next week. Please come and share next week what your first meal was on completion day. I say fish and chips. A few of you disagree with me, but fish and chips, a great first meal. Great first meal. Uh, DM, I appreciate your content, mate. You're my go-to for non-bullshit breakdown of the market. I've got nothing to gain or to or to lose by just reporting what I'm what I'm seeing. Um, my small reach of people is not going to affect the housing market. <laughs> so uh, no, I appreciate your kind words, DM. Thank you very much, mate. And get making that app as well that we talked about a few months ago. <laughs> uh, one less car. Also, exchange uh, exchanging tomorrow. Another round of applause for you. Congratulations, congratulations. Really, really pleased for your one less car. Hope you do come back and share your journey with us as well um, and, and help out other first-time buyers and home movers with, with your experiences. And if any one of you would love to come on the channel and have a chat and sort of share your story, then please, please drop me an email, lee at leeeverettproperty.co.uk. Would love to get somebody on the channel um, to, to have a chat with so everybody else can, can hear um, your experiencing experiences and also ask you any questions as well. Don't be camera shy. It's easy. It's easy. You haven't got to look like Leonardo DiCaprio or Stephen Mulhern to uh, to do this, you know. Uh, and some congratulations from uh, <clears throat> from Nourishing Roots. Some, a lot of love. Don Beast, to se- September. Have I missed something from you there, my friend? Uh, might have to elaborate on what you mean by September. You're welcome, Suzu. So it says high risk. So in which case it's going to be, um, you'll be looking at is there any defences? Um, see, I've not come across high risk before. My area is right by the seafront, but we've got massive, we've not had a flood since 1950. Um, and actually came around from the back. So um, yeah, yeah, that uh, it's difficult. Seek solicitor's advice, um, speak to the neighbours. If you can speak to the neighbours, see what they've experienced. Because remember, if you're in a high uh, flood risk area, your home insurance will be more money as well. So that's an ongoing cost, which is going to be, uh, um, <laughs> sorry, cheers, Dom. Um, yeah, that is going to cost you more money each year or month, depending on how you, how you decide to pay it. But yeah, definitely speak to some neighbours, local agents, get a history of when it last flooded, how bad, what it affected, where it affected, and see if any improvements have been made since, since then. Uh, where are we? Sonia? Hi Lee, we have our mortgage approved. Let's get rid of the report because someone's just pointed out to me that I spelled September wrong. Hope that doesn't lose all um, <laughs> all credibility, but it is true that, it is all true. Uh, right, where was he? Hi Lee, we have our mortgage approved. Fantastic, husband slash wife joint. If I quit job during the buying process or change from full-time to part-time, do we need to update the lender? Legally, yes. Do people do it? You have to inform your lender if there is anything that's going to happen which could affect your ability to pay your mortgage. Okay, so if you're pregnant, uh, which you have a baby, hours are due to drop, um, job relocation, stuff like that, the agreement you've signed, I believe, again, speak to your broker or um, don't speak to your broker, speak to another broker um, and and see what they advise. Um, Yeah, but from my understanding, anything that's going to affect your ability to pay your mortgage, you would need to speak to your, your lender about so they can um, do their stress tests against a worst case scenario of what money you would be on um, if that was was to happen. Probably not the news you wanted to hear, uh, but again, you should do it, I believe. Uh, whether people do or not, I don't know. I don't know. I can't, I can't speak for everyone, <laughs> but I think you get you know where I'm going with that. Uh, Basic Surfer, how are we? Hey, Lee, good news, finally, fantastic. Got mortgage offer out last week. Congratulations. That's getting a, uh, what are we going to get for that? Uh, party noise. Can you hear that? Yay. 
Yay. Well done, mate. Well done. You got there in the end. Got there in the end. Really pleased for you, mate. Let's give some uh, some thumbs up for, for all the people that are exchanging and getting their mortgage offers in this very bleak market that apparently we find ourselves in. Uh, Sophie is going for fish and chips. Fantastic choice. There's a chip shop on the road of our new house. Already scouted out the, uh, the place to eat. So... Uh, Good research. Have you done the Just Eat thing as well, where you need to see, you type in your new properties postcode to see what Just Eat and Deliveroo um, uh, takeaways you can get? Uh, my part of the world, there's very few, unfortunately. Saves us money, but yeah, always worth doing that. <laughs> yes, and Don did say, I spelled September wrong, which is why it's gone. I'm doing it in work. What do you expect? What do you expect? Uh, Hitesh, hi, Lee. Can the first equity be used for buying the investment property i'm not sure whether to reduce current mortgage or say are you asking if you can take out the equity from your current house to put down as a deposit for another house theoretically yes speak to a mortgage broker i can put you in touch with one if um if if, if you want to um but you're going to need to keep a certain amount of equity in your property to satisfy your lender they're not going to let you take out all the equity you'll need to have a, at least a certain percentage in there um for them to um, have enough security so um, yeah speak to a mortgage a mortgage broker i can put you in touch with one but yeah theoretically you could you could take out money and you could put it down as a deposit um, or invest it in stocks and shares stuff like that so yeah theoretically you can but again seek independent financial advice before you do anything my friend um Flood risk, check the invite. Yep, exactly that, Tom. Great, great advice. I think I did mention that before. Uh, there should be a way. Um, the search should actually say, because um, that is from the environmental agency, I believe, um, what the risk is. So have a really good good read for it, Suzu. Um, and then any questions, you can speak to your solicitor. If you're using a local solicitor, they can let you know what they've experienced as well around the town. Um, and if anybody's had, had uh, struggled or had uh, worrying views like, like what you, you may be having. Uh, noise. Is there any way to find out if a flat is within a local authority council housing area? I mean, you can normally tell from the outside, can't you? Council houses tend to have that sort of that sort of look. I mean, I live in an ex-council house um, from 1950. Um, it's got that sort of look to it. Um, but I mean, you could... I'm just trying to think. I don't know. There probably is a way. There probably is a way, Noise. Um... Is it a new development? If it's a new development, it's, it's quite easy to tell because they'll normally be the the flats or the the smaller, cheaper houses on a new development. They'll be the ones that the builders build. Quite a few of them, but smaller properties, flats or small terraced houses um, to, to to sort of um, keep up with their obligations for for social housing when building new developments. But generally, from my experience, you you know the areas where there's social housing. Um, they have a certain look. Um, I know my council with the flats, they have certain type of electronic doors. So you know their, their council runs. Um, if you see local council contractors outside of houses and, and buildings, that's normally a giveaway. But I'm not sure if there's a, a list of every social um, house um, in, in a particular local authority. Sorry, I can't help with that. Uh, where are we? Uh, it's saying groundwater flooding high and surface water flooding significant. Ooh, that's, I think you just need to make your own decision on that. I, I would certainly speak to some neighbours. Certainly get, get, get down the street, speak to the owner, speak to some neighbours, find out what their insurance premiums are like, the last time it flooded, and if it did, how bad, um, and then make your own decision. Um yeah, I, 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 there'll be postcodes in my area which are high flood risk because of the floods in 1950s. But we've had sea defences improve since then and, and, and all sorts. So uh, we even had, about five, six years ago, we had uh, storm warnings, warnings to say anybody near the seafront should evacuate further inland. My parents lived about 300 yards from the seafront at, at, at that point. And um, sea defences held fine. And that's with the high tides and storms and, and all sorts. So um, it's got to be um, be logical with with the information, and then base your base your decision on other factors, not just that one report. Speak to the neighbours, speak to the local um, solicitor, and find out what they what they think as well. And then do your decision on that. Uh, if you let your lender know, they will just pull the offer. You're cool. Yeah, yeah. 
this is why some people do and some people may not tell their their lender about certain things um yeah that's <laughs> that's, all, that's all i'm saying it's got to be uh, um <laughs> you should be honest because if you go down to lower money and you can't afford your mortgage then i think effectively you committed mortgage fraud i think it goes as far as that i don't know how far they'll take it but yeah if you, if you don't they will they will re they'll do their affordability checks based on the new information that comes to light and then you probably won't be able to afford the house that you want unless you're buying well under your your max budget from your mortgage agreement so if you're buying well below uh, your mortgage agreement in principle and um, then it may not affect you as much um if at all but if you are buying close to your uh, maximum budget um, and then you're going to say right i'm, I'm going to lose half my wages because i'm going part-time or i'm having a child so i'm going to be on uh, statutory maternity pay then yeah that will that will affect will affect the amount of money they're going to they're going to lend you uh yep some congratulations from anna for all those that have exchanged um yeah, I'm really pleased. Every week we seem to be getting more and more people, which is great. We've, we've seen the journey from when you was offering on houses earlier in the year, the, the crap that you've gone through for the last four or five months, and now you're getting to the good stuff where you're talking about your meal, the food you're going to have when you finally moved in, and Fish and Chips is winning two votes to zero on everything else right now. So uh, some some lovely words there. Uh, Dom, everyone around me saying it should I should wait to buy my first place. Should I wait? Really want to move out of parents. Got a 25% deposit. Dom, there's no one answer for this. So what I have said numerous times is it will depend on your job situation, your family situation, where you want to move to and where you're staying right now. There'll be other factors as well, but for me, they're the main ones. Oh, and your affordability and stuff like that. So 25% deposit. It's difficult talking about percentages because house prices vary from place to place. So if you're going to be 25% now, if house prices go up, that's not going to be 25%. If they go down, you're going to have more money. So forgetting about what money you've got in the bank, if you can get a mortgage now and you can afford the monthly repayments, you see a property that you can see yourself living in for a number of years and you can't foresee uh, anything changing in your immediate future in terms of family getting bigger, smaller, change of jobs, loss of jobs, then there's no reason not to buy now if you tick all of those things. But only you can answer that, not me. So I've got first-time buyers right now who are looking and buying and offering on houses because they've found the right house, they can afford the house, and they want to buy. So they're aware of what may happen, but they're taking the risk. If house prices drop, they're getting their five years. Some are even getting 10-year fixed rate mortgages so they can ride out any drops, paying a slightly higher interest rate, but that's the, the price you pay for security or, or, or some sort of security. So um, yeah, very personal decision, Dom. But if you can't stand living at your parents, <laughs> you can afford a place and you can't see anything changing in the next five years for the reason for you to sell, then potentially buying a house could be the right move for you, but only you can answer that. Not me, not me. Uh, where are we here? Ashley, uh, hello again. Uh, Hubby got a slightly better paying job. Lender keeps asking for us to submit pay slips, so no getting out of it. They really aren't at the moment asking for proof. Yep, I mean, they're going to ask for proof. If you're saying he's on more money now, they want you to prove it, don't they? They want you to prove it. Um, if he's, um, they probably want to see his contract, see if there's any probation period, because uh, some lenders don't like when people start a new job, they're still in their probation period because they can be, um, or their, their employment can be terminated um, straight away while you're in that sort of uh, probation period. So they probably want to see all the ins and outs for ducks. Quack. Um, but yeah, get that proof over to them. You should be absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Uh, Sonia, our level three report suggests the house roof has no protection sheet underneath the tiles. Should we be worried about this as any links mean water will come into the property? Yeah, so a lot of older style properties didn't have this membrane. So you know like what you put over your bike or your, your garden table for like a, a tarpaulin membrane or a fabric membrane underneath the tiles. Um, a lot of older properties don't have that. Unless they've had a... a, a the roof replaced or repaired over the years luckily mine has has so mine's a 1960s 50s 60s house and, and mine has that but there'll be a lot of properties which which don't um it can be an issue if there's a leak but 
if the roof is well maintained in terms of keeping an eye on tiles, uh, ridge tiles and those bits and pieces, then if it does leak, there will be issues on the timbers straight away. Whereas if there is a slip tile, that membrane offers a bit more protection um, before it starts hitting into inside into the inside of your loft and, and potentially into your ceiling. So it is better to have that lining there. It's not essential providing you look after your roof, keep it maintained and inspected quite a lot, then you should spot any problems before they become too major anyway. Um, but that just comes down to good property maintenance, homeowner uh, maintenance, uh, which we all have to uh, have to do, <laughs> have to do. But ideally, in an ideal world, you'd have that membrane, but it's not a necessity. It's not a necessity. It's just good practice now or the standard to have it now. But over the years, standards change time and time again. So, um, I'm sure in another 10, 15 years time, they'll say you'll need three layers of membrane for insulation and stuff like that. Um, or should we, maybe I've answered that. Should we request the seller to do repairs or lower the price? First of all, it doesn't need a repair because the roof hasn't failed unless they've said there is a leak. So at the moment, there's no problem. What you'd be asking the seller to do is to reduce the price to do recommended works by the surveyor, not essential works. So you've got to be careful on how you put this to the seller and to the estate agent. Um, I haven't had that before in 20 years where a buyer has said, because there's no membrane, I want money off. But I have had people renegotiate because the roof does have a leak or something wrong with it and it needs to be fixed or repaired. But in those instances, uh, Sonia, we get quotes first before we start talking money to see if there is actually a problem and then how much that problem is to resolve. Now, laying that membrane would probably mean scaffolding, removing the existing tiles, and then obviously putting this sheet down and then replacing um, at the tiles or putting the tiles back on. So probably not a cheap job. Um, again, it just depends whether, has it marked it as a two or a three in your report? If it's a three, then that's good for you because you can then show that part and just that part of the report to the, uh, to the estate agent and say, look, my surveyor has said this is something that needs to be urgently looked at. If it's a two, so an, an amber or an orange, then that's just an advisory. So it, it's a bit more of a harder sell uh, to ask a seller to, to reduce their price based on an advisory. But if it's a three, and you don't mind sending that segment uh, to, this, uh, to the estate agent, you could ask them to get a quote for how much it would be to put this lining in, and then you can then try, try and renegotiate, um, hopefully anyway, hopefully. Uh, what's the process after the searches, please? So once the searches are back, Suzu, the solicitor will start asking questions or inquiries is the, the posh word they like to use with the seller's solicitor. Uh, there may be some back and forth over the next two, three, four weeks while they get those answered. But generally, once the searches are back and those inquiries are answered, um, there's not a lot more that needs to be done apart from signing your contract, if you haven't done that already, and the solicitor find, uh, getting all the information they've uh, found out for you and putting it in a report for you to read through. So um, after the searches, uh, a few more hurdles, but you're, you're certainly well on your way, certainly well on your way. So there's, a, ah, so there's a two recommendations. So they're not saying it's urgent and needs immediate attention. So without seeing the report, that says to me, the roof is fine right now, but they advise that there should be a membrane under there to give you that extra protection. Not that it needs it right now. It offers extra protection in case the, the roof does leak. But you could ask, you could always ask, but just be prepared for the owner to say no. And if you're still prepared to go ahead, if the owner does say no, I hope that helps. I'm just going to, have a swig of beer, bear with me. Get a bit of a dry throat. Uh, Basic Surfer is back. Uh, ha, thanks, Lee. The lender valuation is sufficient or an independent valuation recommended. Does the lender valuation only cover what they're lending or they value the house? Which will right. So the lender will do their own valuation, which you just happen to get a report from. So it's not for you, it's for them. That surveyor will value the property, what they think the property's worth, doesn't matter. They, I don't think they're told how much the mortgage actually is that they're getting. They'll be asked to value the property for what they think it's worth. Um, and then the bank will let you know whether they agree or not. So if they value it lower, then you've got a choice whether you want to make up the difference, uh, try a different mortgage company uh, or walk away or renegotiate with the seller if they can. So, uh, But I would probably, depending on the age of the property, 
I would get a home buyer survey, which is the level two. You've got the, the valuation survey, which the bank's going to do anyway. And that's for them, not for you. They do go around and have a quick look with a damp meter and stuff like that, but it's nothing too in-depth. Um, if your property is 50, 60 years old and older, then chances are you probably want to do a, a home buyer's report. There will be some instances where if your property is newer than that, um, to get a home buyers or a full structure, like if it's a grade two listed or you start seeing major cracks and stuff like that, then a home buyers or full structure would be recommended. But generally, anything built in the last 30, 40 years, unless there's something majorly obvious, um, there's nothing that a good builder shouldn't be able to spot um, if you do know one. But for peace of mind, spend an extra three, four hundred pounds um, getting a home buyer survey could save you thousands in the long run. So um, my advice would be any anything you at all which is playing on your mind, get a home buyer survey done. Ask the surveyor to specifically look at that for you so they don't miss it and report back to you. I say that it could be the best four or five hundred pounds you ever spend, which could save you thousands of pounds. Uh, so much appreciate you are more than welcome more than welcome and we have overrun by six minutes tonight guys so if you haven't already liked the stream we've had somebody give us a thumbs down so sorry for for annoying you but if you haven't liked please give us a thumbs up it'd be much much appreciated i'll try and release a video between now and next wednesday about what's going on in the, in the property market world thank you so so much for joining me really appreciate every single one of you and i'll see you again next week take care